What's going on? My name's Omar, and this is The Curious Cabinet. I'm a working concept artist in the video game industry, and I want to start this channel to get outside the day-to-day -day work I do for others and explore my own characters and stories. So right now I'm just sketching out my first character, which is the Sullied Fowl. Going through the basic sketching phase, just blocking out the primitives and getting the overall form and uh, character to this, uh, this creature. You know, I want to give it a good personality from the get-go, and I think the, uh, this phase is really important for capturing that, that pose, like the general theming to the character. So I wanted to make a crow, wizard, shaman type thing, and I wanted to emphasize that he's got this sort of like hunch, he's an old man crow, and give him this very pointy, angular, gangly look. You know, I wanted to look kind of creepy, uh, he's evil, you, you always want to use sharper shapes for things that are evil, because things that are sharp are just pointy in the air. And I have a sort of theme to the direction of everything. Uh, I kind of think of the whole, the whole picture as this sort of arrow that's pointing to the right. And I make all my shape designs based around that, that concept or that theme. So I have the uh, the feathers on the top of his head, and they're all pointing. They're sort of sloping down towards the front, whereas the tassels at the bottom of his robe are going to be pointing up. And this creates this really angular, pointy shape. It leads the eye towards the front, where I'm going to have his magical staff and sort of figure that all out. Uh, right now, I'm doing the line art. This is going to be the clean line art that I use for the final piece. Uh, Lining art is probably my favorite part. I've always been really into using like microns or those sort of marker pens. I just, I don't know. I don't know what it's about line art. It's just I find it very meditative and satisfying. Uh, I have a sort of goal with my line art, which is to make the readability of everything very clear. So I try to have a good variety of my line weight. I tend to have sort of shortcuts that I've just developed over the years, putting heavier line weights towards the outside of the character, and I, I keep all the detail in the interior lighter or, or, or thinner. Um, also when I'm doing line weight, I try to think about the shadows that would be built when it's a final thing, so you always want to think about the thing as a finished piece even when you're in this phase of just doing the line art. So I'm imagining that shadow would develop in the crevices of the character, like the armpit or the like under the hood, things like that. So I, I tend to make those have a heavier line weight and whenever I want to push out a form, like the arm against the body, I don't want to lose that that arm in the detail of the body. Likewise I don't want to lose the detail in the body next to the arm. I don't want them to be fighting each other. So I'll, I'll give a thicker line weight to the bottom of that arm there so that it sort of gives it room to breathe next to that. And this is one of the great things about Photoshop is that you can edit things after. Uh, I w I'm always messing with shapes even when I'm in the line art for like, yeah, maybe I should have had these figured out during the sketch phase, but you, sometimes you just see things after and you, it's, it's, that's the beauty of Photoshop. You can fix that straight up. So, you know, I made his legs a little longer because I felt like they were too stubby. And especially for a character like this where I'm going for this very gangly, long look. Like he's got just that creepy finger that'll just gonna poke you. And I, I I just felt like the legs looked too stubby. It didn't, it didn't fit with the character. And I don't know if it looked anatomically correct either. And now you can kind of see as the line art's finishing, I'm, I'm redesigning the staff with that uh, mindset of everything's pointing to the front. It's this arrow shape. And I wanted to make the point of interest at the end of that arrow. So right now I have the staff sort of have a bolder shape. Like I, I the, the, the original design that I did was just a little too safe or conservative. So I really just beefed it up, gave this fun hook shape, you know, kind of reminds me of the beak or the claws and something that's just more interesting to look at with gave this orb thing in the middle which I'm thinking will be a sort of the source of his magical power. 
uh, has, he has all these ropes tying you together. I really want to have this this sort of layered feel, like the the robe has this layered skirt over it. He's got these these wraps that come from his hood that are are just all tattered and, and I, I like just everything about the character has a sort of layered look, which I think reinforces the shamanic vibe. So a lot of this clothing design is sort of influenced from indigenous culture, tribal culture, you know, everything African, Native American. I think they lead to, the, I just, I've always loved the sort of clothing design of those cultures, various cultures, and I think they just, they're just interesting, they're fun, they have a lot of character to them. Which I wanted to really bring into this, and I think it is part of it. It's just all, it's all those little like layered details. Like he has this sort of belt, and it's still uh, these little coconuts hanging off of them, or whatever they are, some sort of fruit, vegetable, whatever it is. Now uh, I'm gonna go into the coloring phase. So when I'm coloring everything, I want to throw on a flat color at first. Doesn't really matter what this color is. I, w I mean, I guess I, t I would tend to use a color that you're going to use within the piece, but uh, I don't even think I use this green. Maybe I do some parts of it, but really I'm just trying to get a flat color down. And one good thing about this is that it lets you see the picture as a whole now. So now we can see the silhouette of the character and how does it feel from a first read. You know, our eyes are developed to be... Our, 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 we, we still carry the eyes that we did when we were, you know, cavemen, cavewomen hunting in the hunting in the plains. We need to see everything real fast. So we, our eyes, our brains love it when we we can just like read something instantly. And that's what's good about the getting the silhouette is that if your character, if you can tell what your character is just from that silhouette read, then then it's probably a pretty good design because. It, 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 it sort of just it treat gives it gives it's like candy for our brain you know it, it, it treats that pr that primal side and so basically after I get that silhouette filled in I'll just start uh, putting in the various colors that I wanted uh, you know you always want to work with warms and cools so right now I have the sort of the main cloth part be this deep warm red against his very pale cool blue it's like bluey purple skin skin tone you know, dark bluish, purpley feathers. Uh, very, very cool tones against that red. It makes his body really pop out from that. And the clothing, you know, I give him these warm browns, staff, warm brown, or uh, well, that one's a cooler brown actually. Uh, you know, just keeping keeping his body separate from his clothing by playing with that warm and cool sort of juxtaposition. Uh, one thing I really like about the indigenous cultures too is, is that they tend to be very uh, colorful with their pattern work. So I actually went with this green, blue, red look to give it a little more uh, a little more excitement. I didn't want to put too much of that pattern work because I think thought it would might detract, but just just a little bit of that gives it that sort of indigenous feel to it, which is really nice. And now I'm working on that, that orb thing, which Originally, I was gonna make it a sort of like glowing, magical orb, but something about it felt fake or something. I don't know. So I, eventually, I changed it. I, I made it brown. I thought of it. I, it just didn't feel, feel like it fit the sort of like DIY clothing of of the shamanic sort of wizard feel. So I, I turned it into like a coconut in the middle, because coconuts are dope and it just looks nice there and now we're adding the shadow shapes so what I do for that is I take a saturated purple or blue so some sort of cool tone you can use you can use warm tones but um, you know you don't have to think about how your lights gonna be when you're doing that but for most character concepts I'll just use a purple or a blue I uh, put it on the layer on top of the character's uh, color layer and I'll uh, mask it onto there and just sort of figure out all the shadow shapes. Now when you're designing the shadow shapes you really want to think about 
one, how uh, how the form reads. Like, does this look like? Is this gonna give the 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 different aspects of the form that 3D look? Like, you really want to think how form works against lighting. You know, I have this lighting coming from the top right, and I, I want to make sure all the shadows sort of face away from that. And when I'm designing the shadow shapes, I do want to think about how how it all relates to the general form of the piece. So everything's pointing to the front. I want to have all my shadows sort of pointing that way as well. Uh, what I what I did just there is well, right now I'm just fixing up some ones I missed, I guess. Uh, one other thing I'll do is uh, I I tend to put a gradient on on top of the shadow layer. I'll put another purple gradient going from the bottom up. Put both of them on multiply, and what this will do is it'll, it'll have the bottom be darker than the top, and then from the top I'll put a gradient coming down, which will be the light, uh, most likely on an overlay layer. Uh, add a couple highlights onto the skin with uh, another overlay layer on top of that, and I'm just finishing up all the rest of the shadow shapes that I might have missed. So this is a really good way to work. It's fast, and you can get. You know, really good look to your character that that feels pretty three-dimensional, even if you're just using this cel-shaded look. So there's the finished piece. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, check out the rest of my channel. Thank you, and I'll be uploading other drawings soon. Bye.